DM Live TV, your number one digital channel for business, entrepreneurship, and innovation. We grow robust the coffee, process it, and we also roast it and grind it for final consumption. What inspired me to become a coffee farmer is both my grandparents were coffee farmers, so I'm just maintaining a family tradition. The most enjoyable part of my work is to watch the coffee trees grow and produce beans. I've been working for the last 30 years. I have picked up a lot of experiences, a lot of lessons. I worked in the media. I met many great people. I talked to people high up. I talked to people low down. I think I know pretty much what life is all about. So you can ask me anything. You can ask me about parenting. You can ask me about business decisions. You can ask me about what car I think is best to drive. I will tell you which one it is. And also how to look after your dogs. Anything. So let's talk about anything and everything under the sun. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome I knew he was going to cause trouble. Help me welcome Mr. Kabshenga at Worship Harvest for the first time, but not the last time. Please. Wow. Welcome to Business Garage, everyone. This is a special uh, edition. I'm here with uh, yeah, the, the, the legendary Robert Kapshenga. Let me start with a question he asked me to ask him. No, wait. wait. I wait. <laughs> He's setting himself up to make sure that things are okay. <laughs> Chapati. Chapati. Anyway, our viewers, listeners, those joining us in the studio, make some noise. Welcome. Thank you for being here this early Sunday morning and there are people joining us in 47 other locations. Thank you for joining us. Those joining us from your bedroom, your living room, uh, workplace, wherever you are. Those joining us on Spirit TV, Spirit FM, CTV, YouTube, Harvest Radio, and other places, welcome. Mr. Kabshenga, we are delighted to have I'm, you. I'm trying to see uh -huh. if I can have this on my spaces. Oh, that, that, yeah, would, that would be lovely. I, I, yeah, I think it is on now because the, the, the reason why I need to have this is that people who follow me are mostly sinners. So, <laughs> so, 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 so they need to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> many, 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 many of them, many of them are in desperate need of salvation. So, so, so. so. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, Moses, let's start. Otherwise, the problem with me and Moses is that we, we can spend the whole morning here laughing without, <laughs> without doing anything sensible. No. I, to, 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 to you the, said there is a question I must ask you. Yes. So let me start with that one. Okay. Are you humble? No. <laughs> <laughs> this, this has started well. <laughs> <laughs> Any elaborations? Yes. Elaborate. Because many people have the false notion that somehow I am humble, that I arrived at this being humble by my own effort. No. I have been humbled. Yes. And I think it's an important lesson of life. Mm. None of us starts out naturally being humble, but it is important to realize that you have been humbled and then, and then be humble. So Moses, 
I have been humbled by the experiences of life. The most recent one uh -huh. was leaving my former work. Uh, some of you may have known where I used to work before. And I used to be a big man. Big boy, big size. <laughs> Today, zero. Yes. So I go somewhere. I have gone to see a big man like Mukisa. I must also first stop at the reception. <laughs> so I ask them, I say, uh, that there's one famous question people used to ask when they are coming to see me. Now I'm the one who is asking it. Is the big man there? <laughs> then, the, then the girl tells you, mm, let me find out. Then, then she first goes on the phone. So you wait, you stand there. Okay. Then she rings. And then they tell her, yeah, he's in. Okay, he's there, but over her, he's in a meeting. Over, anyway. I tell him you are who? <laughs> but you did not have to wait when you came here. <laughs> I, I tell him you are who? <laughs> I tell him you are who? Uh-huh. Uh, tell him it's Kaushenga. Kahu? Kaushenga. Of where? Uh, street vendor. <laughs> And then, and then, with those kinds of experiences, you realize mm. you can no longer throw around your weight. You must be polite to people because you realize not everybody knows you, even those who do don't care. And if you want to get along, you then say, no, I'm sorry. I am. But you tell him if he's busy, I can come back later on. Say, no, you sit down. So you sit at the reception quietly. Then somebody comes, sees you, recognizes you, then you see them smiling, they point at you, they look at each other, they laugh, they go, you know you are finished. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you the truth. Then the day, the day, the day you accept that reality of yours, mm. then you know you can start again. Because now, of course, now with the, the way I used to be, I used to have uh, a bit of cash. But now, uh, when uh, Madame is going to work, sometimes I ask her, "Do you have fifty k?" <laughs> because I don't have it. There are times when I will not have it. Mm. So the humility you are forced to swallow saliva, and that saliva is very hard. Hey. Have you ever swallowed it, Mukisa? You feel it, it's like a mango. <laughs> <laughs> then you ask her, you say, Madam, hey, 50K, what? She says, hey, things are that bad. She gives you 100,000. Hey, you have a good wife. Yes. Absolutely, yes. Yes. And you must all have a good wife or a good partner because uh, Moses, let me tell the, the young men here, the men here. You may be the breadwinner today mm. and you may walk around your house feeling like a gladiator. As sure as night comes after day, there will come a time when you cannot win that bread. And that woman is the one winning that bread. And you will look at her with an eye and she will look at you and say, you remember when I asked you? <laughs> For Kameza, Mukisa, these women can store. <laughs> So those who don't want to give Kameza, please give Kameza and leave even balance permanently. I've been telling them, give 
If Kameza is 200,000, mm. please give 250 and don't ask for balance. Mm. <laughs> it may not be, Moses, it may be, it may not necessarily be that you, are, you have stopped earning or you don't have money. Mm. But you may find yourself when you have a medical condition, you may fall sick. Mm. I once had a surgery and I never thought that she would assist me to go to the loo. So those things, Moses, they humble you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't then humble yourself, life will continue caning you with lessons until and then the day you bring yourself down is the day you'll start climbing back. Wow. Hey. That's a major lesson. Now, yeah. many people are seeing Kabshenga. Mm. They know the... The exaggerated version. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going well. <laughs> okay. They know the, the, the public person, but just tell us a little bit about yourself. How, you know, how do we get here in, in, in brief? So, <laughs> my parents met. My father was a student at the university and my mother was a high school student in the equivalent of S4 today. As people were those days, one thing led to another and I turned up. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the hurry. <laughs> to, to show up. To show up. Uh. So when I show up, of course, I think they were both ill-prepared for the situation. And so I think my dad just didn't have the courage of his convictions. And he vanished in thin air. And so, <laughs> so my mom was then in S4 back. That marked the end of her schooling. Mm. And so when I was born in 1988, she went off to become a typist and eventually became what is today you call a receptionist. I can't explain to you these jobs. She was a typist and telephone operator. When you have mobile phones, you don't understand what that is, but that's all she was. And so she raised, so, so, so then after that initial disappointment, she ran into another guy, uh, then had another son with him. And then he also vanished into thin air. And then she decided that these men are not serious and dedicated the rest of her life to raising her two boys. Wow. And, and here we are. So I... Wow. Wow. So this one is for the single mothers. Yeah, you, 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 you don't understand. The, the, the men, you don't, unless you've been a son of a single mother, you'll never understand mm, what mm, it is. Mm. And I'm talking about raising two boys in the 70s and the 80s, which were the most difficult times ever. In Uganda, in Uganda, in the yeah. middle of civil war, shortage. But um, then I went to school in Busoga. <clears throat> and no wonder it turned out okay. What you embody, Daife? Uh huh. Am I Niduma. So I was in Namasegali College. Oh wow. But the, which gives me a chance to explain to you another humbling experience. <clears throat> so, when I do my A-levels the first time in 1987, yeah, I'm that old, I failed. I failed to go to Makerere. So my dad by then had reconciled with my mom and they were actually living together. They went on to live together as husband and wife and passed away many years later. Mm -hmm. So my dad tells me that, don't worry, I'm going to get you a scholarship. There used to be a country in Europe called Czechoslovakia. It's now two countries. One is Czech Republic, another one is Slovakia. So he was supposed to get me a scholarship to go there. Now it delayed, and he tells me, no, what you do? Uh, you go and first study in the place of your second choice. Now I put that choice as a joke. Mm. I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> I knew I was going to Makerere, but I'd put second choice 
National Teachers College, Kabale. And I ended up at National Teachers College, Kabale, which later on in life turns out to be fortuitous because I, that's how I learned Ruchiga. So and I learned how to speak Ruchiga because before then I didn't know I, I spoke. My mom was from Bugisu, so I sp I, I'm very fluent in Bugisu. You never mm. ever backbite me in Bugisu. You can't. I'm very fluent in Lusoga. So I knew those two. Then I added Luchiga. Now in 1988, this is something I speak about freely. So don't, don't worry about it. I, I have gone through life, so there's nothing that I'm embarrassed about. <clears throat> so I discover in 1980, I'd known about this, but I come face to face with the reality of my family. My father had schizophrenia. So before he could deliver that scholarship, he gets a breakdown which lasted for two years. In fact, one of the most painful moments for me ever as a result of that episode was in my village in Kanungu, there is a little trading center called Nyakavungo. The guys there used to refer, because our family was, was very prominent in, in that area. By the way, any person you meet with the name Kaushenga is my relative. There's no other man who had that name apart from my grandfather. And that, I have an uncle here, Kabuka, he's, he's there. That, see, he knows, he will tell you the truth. <clears throat> so, I used to be referred to, the way they would distinguish the children of the different people in my family, my, my, my dad's brothers. So me, I was referred to as Omotabani Womushazi. Yeah. So, the, the son of a madman. That's the one who is the son of the madman of the family. But my father was very accomplished, by the way. He worked as a foreign service officer, even retired as an ambassador. Wow. Yes. You know, life became a bit better later on. So. so that experience, I now have to learn to be a teacher. So I now started taking teaching seriously. Then I gave up on Makiriri. But I was forced to come back to Kampala. Mm. While I was in Kampala, I ran into some friends who I had been with in high school in, in Namasagari. And they were repeating. Yes, they were repeating S6. So they called me and they said, but Robert, you used to be good at history. You come and you discuss for us. We shall give you something. What was that something they were giving me? A bit of money. Because at that time I had a habit so they were giving me a bit of money to buy cigarettes. So I had been reduced to, you, you come and discuss for us, we shall buy for you cigarettes. <clears throat> yes. Then one day, one of them tells me, but Robert, why don't you repeat yourself? <laughs> and we go to Makerere. I said, you think I can repeat? He said, yes, you try. So when we go to register for for senior six exams, mm. I arrived two days too late. This is November 1989. I arrived two days too late for the registration of the March exam, because this day was still in March, mm. of March 1990. So that I tell the guy now, but you told me to repeat now, the date has gone, now what do I do? So I go home, I tell my mother, I said, this people have told me to repeat. Can I repeat? She says, yeah, my son, you repeat. Here's money, you can register. I think it's good for you. You know, the other scholarship things ended. I am on my own. So I go. Now, there was a group of teachers doing coaching in Namirembe there. What later on became progressive and so on. So to cut the long story short, one of the teachers tells me, look, you have the option of going back to senior five. I went, I reflected on it at night, what you people call prayer. <laughs> <laughs> and God revealed himself to me. He said, go back to senior five. So I went back to senior five and I sat in class with the people who had been in S1 when I was in S4. And I, was, I had been in S4 as a prefect. Now, now we were sitting together and they were teaching me economics and I, I learned my lesson. I swallowed humble pie, I ate it, I studied and guess what? I went 
became a lawyer, left law school. The timing was perfect, wound up in New Vision. I, I, I became managing director. And now I am here with the Mukisa. We are talking, we are talking a big. Hey! Wow! Wow! That is a rare form of resilience and humility. You said you are not humble, but I think you are. I was humbled. <laughs> humbled. Humbled. Wow. I, can be, I can be quite arrogant, actually. <laughs> and, and abrasive, yes. But I, I am now, at this point in my life, going through a process of taming my ego. After having operated at a very high level, and chilled with the big boys, it's now time to remember that I am only human. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, New Vision, Managing Director, that should be quite huge because when I think about Vision Group, there are so many different entities under the same organization. Tell, me, tell us a little bit because one day, maybe some people, they are building businesses that may get to that level. That's what we are trying to do here at Business Garage. What is it like running such a monster organization, if you like? So, I don't want to bring it to my level, but I want to, to, to start with each and every one of you. I want you to think about yourself as a business entity. How do you run you? Hey. How? How do you run you? Mm. How, what are the inputs in this business called Mukisa? Mm. And then what are the outputs? What do you ingest as your inputs? Garbage in, garbage out. Mm. Simple rule. Rule number one, you are responsible for more than you realize. Mm. You are not here because of yourself only. You are here because of a specific design or plan. And in your case, God has deployed you for the good of other people. Mm, 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 mm. So, how are you running this business called Kabshenga? For the benefit of others. That's how you run a business of that size. So during that time, I had to come to the realization that the livelihoods of many people were dependent on me. Mm. In your homes, how many of you here have homes that have more than you? Oh, yeah. There are people in your home who go to bed and fall asleep peacefully, trusting that you've got them covered. You can't afford to be reckless. Mm. You have to be deliberate, responsible, know what your position is. So I realized for instance, that I was responsible for the livelihoods of over 1,000. So let me explain to you. So we had over 1,000 direct employees. We wow. had 3,360 street vendors. We had over 1,000 people in the advertising industry that were dependent on this one organization for 70% of their income. Now, I want you to multiply that by three because that's the average number of dependents each of those people has. So suddenly you realize that you're responsible for 21,000 people and it's not a joke anymore. It's not funny. You cannot afford to fool around. So you must put in the time. You must work. You must sacrifice. Am I allowed to ask you a question? Please. What's your first name? Moses. 
if you mean family. yes yes mm. what did moses do in the bible mm. 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 all of you you are here just sitting singing praises or oh, raising hands go and read exodus mm. 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 the movement of god's people yeah he took them out of bondage yes. yeah moses is here this mukisa is trying to take you out of the bondage of poverty mm. but moses can only part the red sea you have to cross it hey yes you're preaching good Moses can only part the Red Sea. You must walk across. Yeah. As you walk across, you must carry your luggage. You must take your family. You must help the old and the infirm to cross with you to the promised land. Yeah. Then you get to the promised land and Moses starts to teach you the things you must do when you're in the promised land. What do you end up doing? You ignore Moses because he's not there during the week he's gone to the mountain when he comes back you are busy worshiping idols <laughs> cars dresses things that don't matter consumption yeah. you have to do the work yeah 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 that's why Moses is here that's why he's an apostle that's why he brought me He came to the mountain and found my teachings and said you come and show these people. But you must do the work. It is actually. Mm, 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 mm. You have to work. Yeah. You have to be disciplined. Mm. You must resist temptation. Mm. Because you will be distracted by the things that take you off your path and lead you away from the promised land. Wow. And then you might need a Joshua. Mm. One little known one of the little known secrets is because I've hidden many things away. I am known one of my other names is Joshua. Hey. Yes. This is serious. So we have here Moses and it's Joshua. Only right? Some members of my family who use it. <laughs> so if this one fails, I will come in. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> But the point for me is yeah. don't think of the Bible in the remote yeah. It's now. Mm. So think of the time you've asked me. I was aware of all those things. I am responsible for taking people from here to there. Yeah. There are people who have trusted me with their lives. Yeah. They have young families. I must make them cross the Red Sea. Yeah. I must show them what they need to do in order for us to reach the promised land. When they stray I must remind them. I may not get there with you. Moses may not get there with you. He doesn't need to get there with you. But, But you must go in. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to our time. Anyway, it's all right. <laughs> so, wow. That, that's that's huge. So then, so what yes. you call it? S F F G G. Mm. That's your Torah. Wow. You are blessed. For us, we're on the outside. We peep. We see those people are lucky. Wow. So then you went through a huge maybe huge maybe not because we from what you've told us it's the same person and that's the most important thing yeah. the same person running yeah. new vision same person running rujeo same person running 360 yeah. <clears throat> mentor that that transition from this organized space to yes. this other space of r- running a farm uh, running a mentorship program ha- so so you, you you brought me here to to preach not so uh, yes. again, to minister to you yes please go ahead minister so to us you used to 
life in Egypt as slaves. You know, you're used to your poverty. You don't have money. You don't have... Then you've got to cross, be freed from bondage. You've got to cross the Red Sea. You get to Canaan. You're in the wilderness for 40 days and so on. All of those are lessons that life as you know it now is not permanent. Including the fact that at some point the fellow up there will call you. In other words, as you live life today, mm. today, now, 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 mm. you have one eye on today. How you live your life now will determine whether you get to the promised land now that's why moses was teaching you the commandments behave like this now so that you get to the promised yeah. land mm. what am i saying even as I, I was working at this place i knew that one day i'm going to have to leave where did i want to go after i had left i didn't want to just be surprised you wake up in the morning and suddenly you, you are there how can you just be there? Somebody who went to school, who has told you you're just there? So seven years ago, seven, yeah, no, um, eight, mm. eight years ago, 2014, I started to reflect on, uh, so every year from 2014 to 2021, at the beginning of each year, and I would reflect on this issue um, <clears throat> every three months or four months, I would say, what will happen to me or what will I do if my stay at Vision ended abruptly? Every year I reflected on that issue and I would write it down in my notebook. I'd say, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do, and I would review it every three months because situations would change. So, I arrived at this conclusion in 2015 when I said, if I left Vision today, I will go into farming. I don't know if you have time, but I can tell you a quick story. Please. So, when I was still there, there was something we used to do called Pakasa. Mm. So, we used to have a similar town hall meeting like this in Mbarara. So, I went to this town hall meeting in December of 2014, and I was hosting a panel, like you're talking to me now. And a man, one of the panelists, spoke. He used to work for an organization. At that time, many of you are too young to know. There was an organization called Uganda Electricity Board. <laughs> <laughs> we used to call it Uganda Enzikiza Board. Because <laughs> they had more darkness then. So he said he used to see his bosses. <clears throat> okay? Half an acre in Kololo, nice colonial house, houseboy, shamba boy, guard, driver, two cars, all at the expense of the company. Yeah. He said the guy would retire, there would be a big party, <clears throat> they give him a big box as a gift, which was a fridge. <laughs> he goes. <laughs> he said you, he would, you would meet that man three years later. He's in the same suit which he was wearing at the farewell. He has on his belt, the same belt, but he has added three holes. He's carrying, Ugandans like calling them in a very strange way, documents. Hmm? He's carrying his documents in a bag. Now, me, Munyiru, and Mukisa will know that bag. There was a bag called No Problem. <laughs> <laughs> Even Kanyamunyu knows that, uh, that bag called No Problem. And he said, you'd meet him carrying his bag and he's talking to himself. Life has taken a funny turn because of lack of preparedness. Preparedness, yeah. Mukisa, I listened to that story. I visualized myself <clears throat> after being the MD CEO, Vision Group, Kaganga, always on the headline, in the pictures. I visualized myself <clears throat> suddenly on the streets, walking around with the, my transcripts and documents in an envelope. And those days, I don't think they sell no problem anymore. So I'd be in an envelope, 
on Ginger Road there talking to myself. Then the people I used to supervise, you meet them and they avoid you, they cross the road. Then you remember that you want to go and ask for a newspaper, you go to the reception, the man who used to report to you tells the receptionist, tell him I'm not around. I thought about that situation and I said to myself, I don't want to be like this. Mm. The man who told that story said when they disbanded UEB and they told them to, they had a choice. Either you got your retirement package and left or you were integrated into one of the companies, one of the three. So they, he was offered a job in transmission and he refused. His boss insulted him. You're an idiot. How can you refuse? You're a good worker. Okay. What are you going to do? He said, I'm meant to do business. They gave him his money. He went to Mbarara. He set up a shop. He started business. The people from Mbarara may know this man. There is a business in Mbarara called Baria Hardwares. So, <clears throat> I thought to myself, I said to me, you, Kabushenga, you're going to be walking on the streets here. Then you see, you hear that there is a seminar in Imperial Hotel, they are talking about uh, human rights. You go there, you start speaking English, you talk English, very difficult English, so that they can hear you. And then at break, you are the first in the line for tea and sumbusa. No, 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 no. I said, no. <laughs> I must do something of dignity, mm, mm. of esteem. Yeah. I thought about becoming a trader, it can't work. I had spent the last how many years, I'd never been to court, so I couldn't do private practice. So I decided the best thing to do, the only thing I could do was farming. And I, we had been doing best farmers, so I'd seen successful farmers. Plus, I know myself well enough to know that I have propensity for extreme form of hard work. I can endure physical strain on another level. So I was prepared. So in 2015, I started my farm as a preparation for when I would leave. Yeah. On, I left on the 30th of May, on, uh, sorry, on the 30th of April. On the 1st of May, I was at my farm working. And I have been there ever since. You are the ones who keep bringing me back to Kampala here to come and see how <clears throat> your traffic jam is. But otherwise, I'm now a proper villager. Occasionally, if I am in Kampala, I'm a street vendor. If you call me now, ask me for an appointment, I don't know where to meet you. I don't have an office, except at the farm. Quickly about 360 mentor. So when the lockdown came in 2020, so I, I have many people who engage with me on social media. But in 2020, I observed that you people, apart from maybe you of worship, everybody else was just passing time on social media, exchanging jokes, funny videos, discussing films on Netflix. God gave us two months paid, fully paid holiday. You are discussing Netflix. I couldn't understand that. But I didn't do anything at that time because I was involved with the National Task Force. And I was really worried about the state of the company, so I was distracted. So when the second lockdown came, I said, how can I be of use to mm. the people who follow me? Mm. So, out of impulse, I posted saying, if you want to learn anything, talk to me. That's the video you saw at the beginning. Little did I realize that it would be hard work. But at that time, I said, if 20, 30, maybe 100 people can uh, agree with me and follow me, victory, I go away. Ha! <laughs> I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. But I was telling uh, Moses and Grace earlier on that <clears throat> God or depending on you, because I have my sinners there, they, they, they start arguing things, life, what, destiny. <laughs> yeah, let me talk about God. <laughs> God has a way, <clears throat> a very strange and twisted way of showing you the way. You keep trying something, it is blocked. You keep trying something, it is blocked. You try something, it takes off. So now I have learned, when I try something and it takes off, I know that is my destiny, so I persist. To see how far you can go with, with it. it. Yeah. And that's what I have done with the, this mentoring. Because, because, and I don't want you to get it wrong, because I had incredible blessings in the last 20 years. 
And I feel that God wants me to pass on to you. I'm paying my debt back. Mm, mm, mm. Contrary to what people think that I am busy looking for what, but no. I, I enjoyed life. Yes. I met president. Some of you, you are going to go through life and die without ever seeing even a, a president of a football club. I met president. I, I even met the Queen of England and we shook hands. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. This is serious. Yes. So you're, you're not looking for work. Please, people of God, people of God, one of my good friends and mentor, and I don't like talking about, I also have mentors, by the way. <laughs> one of my good friends and mentors, even now he still mentors me, calls me, gives me advice to do this. He's a man called Omar Ahmed. Let me see if you recognize Omar Ahmed. CJ's Mandela. So Omar Ahmed taught me a significant lesson from the Quran. He said, people are God's witnesses on earth. When they die, they go to heaven and they tell God that that Mukisa you see there, uh, he's a fake. <laughs> <clears throat> or, when they are still on earth and desperate, they pray for his intervention. God, please save us from Mwenyirwa. He intervenes with lightning, pa out. Come and explain <laughs> So, serious. so, treat God's people well. There's no reason for you, Mokisa, there's no reason for you to be bad, to be nasty, to be, there's no reason. Mm. So, that's one other lesson I have learned. Be generous, be good, freely. You will turn the corner. Because when I realized all of this, I went to a government body. I needed get some things approved and stamped. And a young man walked up to me and he said, excuse me, sir. I said, are you Mr. Kavsheng? I said, yes. He said, I was in the line. The other things I was telling you. Are you Mr. Kavsheng? Yes. Of New Vision? Yes. I, I, I said, I used to be. He said, okay, you come. I followed him. He took me through the back door, processed my papers in 15 minutes and told me, goodbye, sir. I said, now, can I give you something? He said, no, sir. I have benefited enough from Forte de Menta, you go. Wow. Wow. You tell me that you have enough money to pay for that. No. So Forte de Menta <clears throat> So at becomes, the end of 40 days, yeah. I discussed with uh, two, so I work with two other volunteers who are my colleagues and they do analysis of numbers. I said, do we stop this? They said, no, sir. Let's continue with it, but we reduce it to two or three times a week. I said, okay, and I ignored them. Because I said, if we are going to continue with it, we might as well build it and persist with it every day. And so <clears throat> we persisted, and it's growing and growing into an incredible monster. Yeah. Let me just give you a statistic, which we have not been, because we don't want to be marketing around and telling people no. On average, our 360 mentor hashtag every month reaches between 8 and 14 million people. Wow. <laughs> wow. 360 mentor hashtag yeah. 8 to 14 million people. It's the only hashtag that has been trending non-stop since it started on Twitter. Wow. Now, yes. There's, <laughs> there's a, a but, mm -hmm. but, but, and I don't market, I don't do anything, that's not because of any magic on my part. It's because of value and relevance to the people. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about consistency. Uh, yeah, because doing something daily the, the, the last thing I knew that was that consistency was Kaliso Liso Mizanyo on up, CBS. Up to now, they're still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 7.30 a.m. Yes. Like, ha, ha. So, tell us about that. So let me tell you two things. So at the farm, 
from 2015 until I left, until May last year, I went to the farm religiously without fail unless I was out of the country. And when I was out of the country, as soon as I landed at Entebbe Airport, unless it was late at night, I would drive straight to the farm. I went to the farm every single Saturday of every year from 2015 to 2021. And I walked around the farm for two and a half hours inspecting every single thing I did every single Saturday. So, 360 mentor. Every day, now I do it because I need a day of rest. So I do it Monday to Thursday. At nine, I start posting questions. Even if I'm in traffic, I'll find a few minutes I post up to midday. At seven o'clock, on the dot, we start. Whether it's just me and my guest, we start. And at 8.30 we finish unless there's a lot of pressure and demand. Consistently. Because people expect you to be there. They've programmed their life that the church service at Worship Harvest will start at 7 a.m. You can't come and start it at 8.45. Mm, 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 mm. People plan their lives. So, I am there every day from Monday to Thursday at 7 p.m., we talk up to 8.30 and we go away without expecting anything in return. And we have the discipline to find guests, to talk to them, and we finish. I have the discipline to go to the farm consistently and be there, even if there is nothing to do, even if there's no money. There are two, three things that will make you succeed focus, discipline, consistency. Those are the three things you need in order to get grit. Mm, 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 mm. You can't do some things sometimes. I don't do some things sometimes. I do certain things consistently and religiously. And it comes from building small rituals. For instance, I eat food consistently every day with my family members, preferably at home. If I can't avoid it, then too bad. To show you how I am committed to that discipline, about two, three weeks ago, I did a session with a lady called Lisa, Lisa Rio. She's a circles person. She lives in Pretoria. I was driving from Barara. Seven o'clock found me in Masaka. There is a small restaurant called Highway. Hey, I parked at Highway, did spaces with the Lisa, finished at 8.30 p.m., then I drove to Kampala. Wow. Last year, Moses, my mother's sister died in a tragic accident. But I had agreed with Susan and Sibirwa that we would do spaces. We did spaces and finished, and none of you who are listening knew that my mother's sister had died. I can't give you excuses. Wow. I must give you results. You don't care for excuses. All you care about is the results. Results. My... My... Now, we're out of time. We have another service here at 9 o'clock, which is not business courage. Mm. But one last question. Okay. We will try and figure it out. What does the future look like? I am going to give you a very stupid answer. <laughs> That's rare, but let's... <laughs> the future. What does the future look like? It looks like the way you see it. That is not a stupid answer. The future looks like the way I see it. That's a mic drop conclusion right there. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, can you help me appreciate Mr. Robert Kabshenga for 
for coming to spend this morning with us. Wow, 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 wow. You are the one who sometimes just sit briefly on spaces. You always tell us sometimes we go past eight thirty because of pressure. I know I'm going to come under a lot of pressure for you to come back sometime. And I think the people here have treated you well enough for you to make that decision at somehow. <laughs> you know, I told you, I, 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 I'm not one of the best Christians <laughs> around. And so <laughs> this is the only place, worship harvest is the only place my children have ever gone to worship. So if you say yes, so... Oh wow! The only, the only pastor that you know is Mukti. <laughs> so, so you can see. Thank so, you. Yeah, it's a so, great so, honor. So, if you want me to come back, we can always discuss it. I told you that I would come today, and I've kept my word. Yes, a man of your word. Wow! Thank you again, and for those who are joining us uh, online at home here in the studio, you've had it for yourself. The future looks like the way you see it so can we just pray as we close thank you father for today thank you for this time thank you for this inspiration thank you for uh, Mr. Kabshenga we know you he has dreams and things that he's working on we pray that you continue to show him the way the way you say that you, sh you, you show him the way that you'll make that clear and that whatever he puts his hands on, he will be satisfied in seeing the desired end of it, the desired result of it. And for the rest of us, we commit the rest of our week to you, the rest of our Sunday. May you give us hope uh, where there seems to be no hope. We bless you. We thank you. And my friends, if you're online, uh, or if you're here, or wherever you are, and... We, we, will not, we don't stop a service here at Worship Harvest without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Uh, he came into my life. He changed my life. I could have been anything, something, I don't know. But here we are trying to serve, trying to change people's lives. You too can make that decision today. The Bible says that with the heart you believe, to write your sins and with the mouth serve, confession is made to salvation so if you're online if you are in the house if you're at home and you want to make that decision i'm just going to ask you to pray short prayer say lord jesus come into my heart change my life take my life and do something significant with it amen if you pray that prayer i believe that you have received god in your heart and if you're online, there's a number on your screen, 775 Text, call. There's someone on the end of that line just to have a conversation with you. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining us for Business Garage. We'll be back in about 10 minutes for our uh, Sunday garage or our Sunday service. Once again, can you hear me? I appreciate Mr. Kavshenga. Wow, what an honor.